Hello everyone, I'm Akhil Raj, a second year MBBS student studying at Gandhi Medical College, Sikindarabad and since the past one month I have been following a timetable which I designed for myself. Considering my university exam preparation which are going to be in one or two months and then my YouTube upload schedule, editing days, working days, uploading days and everything I have compiled and made a timetable for myself and it has been a game changer for my productivity. So I thought why not help you guys make a timetable for yourself also and level up your productivity by 10 times. Now I know a lot of us struggle from making a timetable and even if you make one somehow we are not going to stick to it for a long time it will last for four or five days and then it will end up in the dashboard So watch this video till the end and I will help you make a perfect timetable which you will stick to and you will increase your productivity. So step one is to segregate your fixed hours and free hours. What are fixed hours? Fixed hours are the hours which you are spending in the college, coaching, tuition and the time which you are spending in eating, bathing and sleeping. These are the times where you cannot be productive and you cannot study. Obviously you cannot study while eating your lunch or dinner or while bathing. So these are the times which should not be included in your timetable. Then coming to free hours, just remove the fixed hours from your day and then you will have your free hours. You have completed your college, you have completed sleeping, you have completed eating, bathing and all that activities and now you are ready to sit down and study as much as possible and be productive and complete your task for the day. Step 2 is to write down your goals for the day. Imagine if you are in a boat and it does not have a destination, what will happen? You will just keep floating in the ocean without any destination and you will not make any progress and you will be lost in the ocean. Same thing happens when you don't have a plan for your day. Just take a paper and write down what all you want to study or what all you want to achieve today and just keep it in front of you or keep it in your desk or anywhere possible where you can look at it properly. Then the most important thing here which will differentiate your normal timetable and a productivity timetable is setting realistic goals. Be honest and realistic with yourself. Don't tell yourself that you are going to study 8 chapters all of a sudden on a Sunday in 8 hours. Sapne dekna. Because you just can't do that and you will fail on the first day and you will just throw your timetable in the dustbin. So be honest with yourself and set realistic goals which you can achieve in a particular day. That will help your timetable sustain for a longer time and you will stick to it and also improve your productivity with it. Step 3 is to prioritize your tasks. For this I have a personal favorite method. Just take a paper and draw a plus symbol. Now we have four different boxes. So the first box which is on the top left is going to be the tasks which are most important and have to be immediately done. So examples for this box are hard tasks which you feel are very complicated. For me, it can be reading anatomy or pathology. For you, if you are writing NEET or JE, it can be doing a big chapter of physics and then solving its MCQs. So this is going to be your first box. Then coming to the second box. Second box will include the important task which can be delayed. So imagine you are going to study for a test which is one month later. You have to study for the test but it is not that urgent. Then coming to your third box. Third box is the non-important task but they have to be done immediately. For me, it can be doing records. For you, it can be doing your workbooks, doing your problems or writing some classwork or something else. Just writing works in which you do not actually use your brain. Then coming to your fourth box which will include the non-important task and can be delayed. So these are the tasks like scrolling reels, watching Instagram, replying to DMs, watching Netflix and doing all that fun activities which you feel are fun but are indeed wasting your time. So now that you have prioritized your tasks, first thing you have to do is eat the frog right away in the morning. This has been told by Brian Tracy in his book Eat the Frog. Eating the frog first thing in the morning means that you have to do your tougher subjects or tougher tasks right away in the morning when you are starting your day. Don't delay them. I know you want to do the easy task first and then move on to the hard task but easy task will take Take up all your time or else after completing the easy task you may not be in the mood to study because you are already burned out and that hard task will never get completed and it is going to be incomplete and it will remain a hard task forever. Instead do the hard task first thing in the morning and you will complete the hard task by afternoon or some and then you will feel productive and you will do the other task also because you have a lot of time left you have afternoon and the evening and then night. Now coming to the second box these are the important tasks and which can be delayed. So these are the tasks which can be done in the afternoon or evening when you have already studied for morning and afternoon so you can come down to these tasks in the evening and then do these tasks in the evening so you don't have to be most productive but eventually you will get the task done because you have so much time in the evening then coming to the third box whenever you feel burned out from studying or you just lose your focus just open your workbook your record or whatever writing work you have 
and start writing it because obviously we are writing our records mindlessly we don't have to focus on it much you can just play some music and then start writing your record it will be a kind of relaxation for your brain and also you will escape from the burnout and then you can continue with the other task of the day and at the end of the day you have completed your records and you have been productive and you have completed your hard and also the easy task so once you are done with your timetable and your productive day has been successfully achieved you can go and watch some reels watch some netflix watch your favorite show on the tv and just relax for some time then the step four is to set realistic time intervals let's say you are going to college from 8 am to 4 pm you can't make a timetable saying that you are going to study from 4:15 to 10:15 right after college continuously for 6 hours and complete these many tasks and then sleep immediately and wake up at 5 am and complete studying again till 8 am that is not going to happen and that timetable won't last very long it will last only 1 to 2 days and then you will be on the bed sleeping like a baby Instead, set realistic time intervals in your timetable. After coming from college, take a break for half an hour, 45 minutes, or one hour, and start studying at five o'clock. And from five o'clock, you can read till 5:40 or 5:45 because you can't get into focus right away. So you can't tell yourself that you are going to read for two hours straight right after coming from college. So read for 40 minutes or 45 minutes, then take a 15 minutes break, and then read for one and a half an hour, and then take a 15 minutes break, and then read for two hours. And by that time, you will reach your dinner time, which will be around nine o'clock or ten o'clock. and you can go for your dinner so that is how you can set realistic time intervals and manage your time and get some things done in your day step number 5 is to fix your sleep cycle this is a very important step and this is where most of the people fail their timetable because imagine today is a holiday and you planned your to do list to be a very big list and you kept a lot of topics so what you will do eventually you will start completing the task and then by the end of the day you will have one more task left which will take 3 hours and the time is already 12 am so what you will do with basic instinct of motivation because it's your first day following the timetable you will try to complete the task and you will sleep at 3 am the next day what will happen you will wake up at 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock but your timetable already starts at 9 o'clock what will happen you will just fail your timetable right away in the morning when you wake up and you will just feel demotivated because your timetable has already lost its pace and you don't want to follow it anymore and you will waste the entire day so we don't want that so the best method is to follow your sleep cycle and wake up at a particular time and sleep at a particular time so that you can accurately follow your timetable and be productive at the same time and also not be sleepy when you are studying so please do not sacrifice on your sleep in the last one month or 15 days of the exam it's okay to sacrifice your sleep but in the long run it is not very good for your mental health or your physical health so please don't sacrifice on your sleep sleep for 7 hours or 8 hours and you will still have 15 to 16 hours in a day and that is more than enough to read any amount of syllabus in this entire world so please don't sacrifice on your sleep Then step six is to add buffer hours and buffer days in your timetable. Let's say you are a first year student who decided to study anatomy for six days and biochemistry for six days. So let's say with a lot of motivation, you decided to complete lower limb, thorax, and abdomen in the six days of reading anatomy. So what will happen by the end of six days? You have completed lower limb, you have completed thorax, you have just started abdomen, like you have read for five or ten pages. But abdomen is a very vast chapter. So what will happen? You will take some extra days to complete abdomen. Now what is going to happen? The abdomen, which was going to be completed in three or two days, it will expand to 5 or 6 days so this is known as parkinson's law the work expands as much as the time given to it so what will happen the abdomen will keep expanding and it will eat off 5 or 6 days again and the biochemistry part will get postponed and you will never feel motivated to ever touch biochemistry again because you have terribly failed your initial plan so whenever you make a timetable have a buffer hour of 2 hours where you can enjoy with your friends or do other random activities but you should not use this time for scrolling instagram reels if you don't have any work use this time to complete an additional task for tomorrow or something like that and if you have a backlog you can complete it in the buffer time so that is what will help you stick to the timetable in the long run step 7 is to revise and analyze so after following your timetable successfully for 3 4 or 6 weeks you will see a lot of mistakes in your timetable because obviously our lives keep changing and as you follow your timetable you become more and more productive and you will find out the loopholes wherever you are not being productive and wherever you are wasting time so what you have to do is revise and analyze and make new timetables according to you and improve your productivity and increase the number of hours you are studying in a day because with increasing competition in neat and je you have to be better than most of the students studying across india so you have to be something special you have to be one step ahead of them so revise analyze and make your timetable better and better every day so that you can be more work efficient and you will have less burnouts step 8 is rewarding yourself 
If you watch my videos on the channel, you can see after studying for very long hours, I eat biryani, I eat ice cream, I eat chocolates, I eat whatever I like. And this is like a rewarding system for my brain because our brain runs on dopamine. And whenever it gets dopamine, it likes the activity very much. That is why whenever you scroll through Instagram Reels, you feel very happy because that song, that acting or anything like that is going to give you short term dopamine and you are going to feel very happy with that. But in the long run, your receptors will get adapted to your dopamine and then you have to watch more and more and more Reels in order to get that dopamine and feel happy. So your screen time goes on increasing from 6 hours, 8 hours, 10 hours and then 12 hours. So that is how your addiction works. So this can also be done with your studying. So whenever you study for three hours, four hours, give yourself a small chocolate or go out for a walk or go out to that cafe which you always wanted to go, go out with your friends, watch a movie and reward yourself in some or the other way so that you can enjoy this activity of studying and whenever you complete a task you feel a sense of achievement and you feel happy for yourself and that dopamine is going to help you stick to your timetable for a longer time and also help you complete your daily task every day without missing and without losing motivation. Then step 9 is discipline. Whatever the 8 steps I told previously are nothing without you having discipline. Discipline is very, very, very different from motivation. Motivation is just a small spike of energy inside your brain which will help you run for two or three days and complete your task every day. But discipline is what you need to have every day in order to show up to your desk, open those books and start studying and completing your daily tasks. Students always need motivation and they keep searching for YouTube videos which are motivational speeches or any AR1 speeches or anything like that which will help them get motivated but eventually what is going to happen they'll watch that video they'll get motivated for a few hours and then they're going to study and then eventually they are back to the stage one where they are not in the mood to study so motivation is not what you need you need discipline you need discipline to show up every day and then do your work on the desk and just have respect over yourself and respect your words in the morning if you're saying that you're going to study for eight hours and in the afternoon you just give up and then say you're going to continue from tomorrow or you're going to make a new timetable tomorrow and then tomorrow 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 the timetable keeps piling up and it never happens and your tasks are just like that sitting on that desk and I guarantee you, if you are going to make a timetable by following all these nine steps, then you will come and thank me in the comment section because this is how a timetable works and this is how you can stick to it for a longer time. And then the final step is step 10, which is subscribing to my channel because I will help you be more and more productive every week. So hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next Wednesday. Until then, bye bye.